Hello, in this supplementary uh, lecture, I'm going to be looking at some of the topics that I was unable to cover during our face-to-face -face, uh, lecture slot. Uh, I know this video is fairly long, so if you want to speed it up, uh, please go and look at the page that says uh, Web Resource Survey. And at the bottom, there is a little video teaching you how to do a plug-in in your Chrome browser so that you can change the speed. So I'm going to look at here alcoholic encephalopathy or alcoholic um, related brain disease and neurodegenerative diseases. It's only several of them, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's and Huntington's chorea. Right, so this in a nutshell is what we're going to be talking about. Neurodegenerative and metabolic CNS disease, just specifically alcohol uh, related brain disease. So for neurodegenerative diseases, these are defined as a spectrum of conditions where there is progressive loss of specific groups of neurons or specific areas in the brain. Usually they occur in more elderly patients, but not always. Uh, there are several main syndromes, one of which is when uh, cognitive impairment, such as dementia, and of course uh, the poster for this poster disease for this would be Alzheimer's disease. There are movement disorders such as Parkinson's disease and Huntington chorea, and then motor weakness such as motor neuron disease, and other more specific uh, localized diseases such as spinal cerebellar degenerations or Friedrich's ataxia. Here I'm only going to be talking about Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, and Huntington's chorea, mercifully. So let's start off with Alzheimer's disease. This is going to be a very important problem uh, in many parts of the world, including Singapore, because of the aging population. Um, many cases occur in older patients. However, not all of them. Some of them do occur in an earlier age group. There is a genetic basis for Alzheimer's disease. So the amyloid precursor protein gene, this is located on chromosome 21. And this gene is uh, responsible for producing this APP protein. Uh, the abnormality in Alzheimer's disease is amyloid beta or beta amyloid. And this protein is insoluble and it deposits in the brain in an extracellular location. So this protein is actually a sub part of the amyloid precursor protein. So if there's an abnormality uh, in this particular protein. This can predispose the patient to production of the abnormal beta amyloid. There are other genes, gene abnormalities, that can also predispose to increased production of beta amyloid. And you can read about this in Robbins. Now, there is another protein that is abnormally accumulated. This time it is intracellular and it's called the tau protein. When tau is hyperphosphorylated, it tends to tangle up with other threads of tau and then um, they form what is called neurofibrillary tangles. So patients with this particular uh, subtype or isoform of the epo, epolipoprotein E4 uh, allele on chromosome 19, they are more predisposed to tau hyperphosphorylation and therefore accumulation of tau protein. So clinically, uh, patients will experience progressive cognitive decline and progressive immobility and eventually they will succumb to conditions such as pneumonia. Grossly, the brain is actually visibly atrophied. It is lighter if you were to weigh it. Um, and uh, we can see that there is, the temporal lobe is the one that is most affected. So if you were to do an um, MRI of this patient, you will see that the sulci are actually deeper, widened um, due to cerebral atrophy. So on morphology, in terms of microscopic morphology, we can see the actual abnormal protein deposition. And these proteins will actually deposit in areas that are associated with memory, the function of memory, so the hippocampus or the neocortex. Here, what you're looking at is actually the senile plaque or the amyloid plaque, which if you recall, is made up of beta amyloid. And remember, this is extracellular. If you recall studying amyloid earlier on in general pathology, it is always extracellular. Sometimes you may or may not also see amyloid deposition in the blood vessel walls. Now, neurofibrillary tangles are made up of tau protein, and in contrast to amyloid, which is extracellular, neurofibrillary tangles are intracellular, and they are actually found within the neurons. Um, it is not really uh, entirely certain whether the neurofibrillary tangles themselves are causative events in Alzheimer's disease, but it is more generally accepted that the amyloid plaques 
a very important um, predisposition to the development of amyloid disease. There is resulting neuronal damage and neuronal loss. So if you want to look up more uh, on explanations about the pathophysiology of amyloid disease, this is an excellent reference, eMedicine. All you have to do is Google and hopefully you can, unlike me, spell the word disease correctly. So now moving on to Parkinson's disease, this is a movement disorder and usually occurs in slightly younger patients as compared to Alzheimer's. Uh, we have a loss of the nerve cells or the neurons from the substantia nigra, which is part of the midbrain. And these neurons are actually visible to the naked eye when uh, in the normal substantia nigra because they contain this brown neuromelanin pigment. Uh, because they actually project to the basal ganglia, they actually deliver dopamine there. So when there is loss of these neurons, there is therefore reduced dopamine delivery to the basal ganglia, and therefore we get these movement disorders. And what we can see on histology, um, in addition to loss of these pigmented cells in the substantia nigra, we also see accumulations of abnormal proteins, which are called Lewy bodies. So let me explain a little bit more. Um, there may be a disorder of the alpha synuclein gene. This encodes the alpha synuclein protein, quite logical. And when the gene is abnormal, you get the accumulation of the abnormal synuclein protein. And this is what makes up the Lewy bodies, which we see in the neurons. So clinically, the patients uh, will experience rigidity. There will be slowing of voluntary movements. There may be a rest tremor. There's a whole host of symptoms which you, I'm sure, will learn about in your medicine uh, posting. And if you know uh, the actor Michael J. Fox, he actually has Parkinson's disease. It's probably out of your generation, but if you can look at movies um, starring him in the later years, more recent years, you may be able to pick up some of the uh, clinical signs. So here we actually have two gross specimens of the midbrain and the substantia nigra is this dark streak here. So just have a look at this and try to think about which is the abnormal one. Okay, so it is actually fairly obvious. You can see that this is much lighter than this one. And um, if we were to take a histology section, we can see that in the normal substantia nigra, you have a high concentration of these pigmented neurons. And this brown stuff is actually neuromelanin within the cytoplasm. As compared to a patient with Parkinson's disease, much, much fewer of these pigmented neurons. And if we look at higher power, we may be able to see these eosinophilic globules, which are Lewy bodies, which are accumulations of alpha synuclein protein. Now, Huntington disease or Huntington chorea, sometimes as it is known as, is also a movement disorder. It is uh, passed on by an autosomal dominant root of inheritance, and these patients have mutations in the Huntington gene. Now, um, this results in increased trinucleotide repeats in this gene, and the Huntington protein, which the gene encodes, will then accumulate in the neurons of the basal ganglia. So again, this is associated with abnormal protein accumulation and therefore there is atrophy and neuronal inclusions and this results in the clinical manifestations. Um, not only do you have movement disorders, there may also be personality disorders or even cognitive decline. And you can read up more specifically about the abnormal movements in Robbins. And the duration of the disease is about 15 to 20 years. So it is a progressive disease. And eventually these patients will also succumb from things like pneumonia um, and heart disease. So this is a gross picture taken from Robbins. And this is a normal section of the brain. You can see the basal ganglia here. And uh, you can go through the anatomy of it. This is markedly atrophied. Not only is the basal ganglia atrophy, you can also see that the cortex in this particular case is also markedly atrophy. So just to summarize regarding neurodegenerative diseases, uh, they are conditions where specific groups of neurons or areas of the brain are affected or damaged or lost. And we've looked at Alzheimer's disease, where the cognitive function is uh, impaired. We've looked at Parkinson's and Huntington's disease, where these are movement disorders. And um, these are all associated with accumulation of abnormal proteins, which can be within neurons or can be extracellular, such as the senile, senile
flux, which are composed of beta amyloid protein. Um, and there is accompanying neuronal damage and loss, which leads to their specific clinical manifestations. So if you know the functions of the specific areas that are affected, you will be able to work out the clinical manifestations. And uh, they may have a genetic predisposition in some patients. Now, just to finish off with alcohol and its effects on the brain, um, in uh, pregnant ladies, especially earlier in fetal development, uh, there can be such a thing as fetal alcohol syndrome, and you will definitely learn about this in your PEDS, pediatrics uh, postings. Um, this comprises growth retardation as well as cerebral malformations. Uh, acute intoxication can actually directly lead to respiratory depression and resulting, uh, result in death. For chronic alcoholism, there can be associated cerebral cortical atrophy as well as cerebellar atrophy, particularly in the vermis. And Wernicke's encephalopathy as well as Korsakoff psychosis, these can occur together. These are associated with thiamine deficiency, which is often seen in uh, chronic alcoholics, uh, sometimes due to malnutrition. So Korsakoff syndrome is also the same. It's also known as psychosis or dementia. This is due to lack of thiamine, which is vitamin B1. This is a very important um, pro uh, this is a very important vitamin because it uh, affects neurotransmission, so the functions of neurons. And uh, without this, with the lack of thiamine, there's resulting damage to specific areas like the medial thalamus and also the mammillary bodies. Classically, what we will see is hemorrhage uh, within the mammillary bodies. And there may also be gen generalized cerebral atrophy. So the risk factors, in addition to alcohol abuse, includes severe malnutrition. So um, Korsakoff psychosis is not only seen in alcoholics, it can also be seen in severe malnutrition and other states as well. Uh, in terms of the pathology, grossly, um, you can see here in the cerebellum, this is a section right through the midline, so you can see the cerebellar vermis, there is atrophy. And also there can be hemorrhage in the mammillary bodies. Um, microscopically, when we look at these areas, there will be neuronal loss. There may be a reactive gliosis, pro uh, proliferation of the glial cells around these areas or within these areas. And also histologically, we can also see hemorrhage within the mammillary bodies. So congratulations for surviving right to this point. And I just want to uh, acknowledge that many of these um, illustrations are taken from the electronic version of Robbins and Quatrain Pathology. This is a very, very excellent textbook and you can actually use it as a reference for particularly difficult topics such as CNS pathology. Thank you.